Sleep is critical to our health. But what's not often discussed is how great life is, that is how much more focused and energetic and how positive our mood gets when we are sleeping for the appropriate amount of time at the appropriate depth and when we are doing that regularly. Let's talk about sleep. Well, put simply, sleep is the foundation of mental health, physical health, and performance of all kinds, cognitive performance, physical performance, etc. It also controls things like our immune system, wound healing, our skin health, and our appearance. Whether or not we can think clearly or not, whether or not we will live as long as we possibly can or not, whether or not we suffer from dramatic age-related cognitive decline or not, in other words, whether or not we keep our memory as we age, I could go on and on about all the terrible things that can happen to somebody if they don't sleep well. Another potent lever for adjusting your sleepiness and wakefulness is caffeine. This, of course, comes as no surprise to people, but why and how caffeine works might come as a surprise. Caffeine prevents the actions of adenosine. That's one of the reasons why caffeine makes us feel alert. But how much caffeine we drink and when we drink caffeine turns out to be vitally important for adjusting our wakefulness and for optimizing our sleep. You might be saying, wait a second, I thought this was an episode about tools for sleep. Well, everything that we're talking about doing in these first 60 to 90 minutes of the day really set in motion a wave of biological cascades that carry through the entire day and into the evening and into the night and really do serve to optimize sleep. So just hang in there with me. Caffeine is something that a lot of people consume early in the day. How much depends on your tolerance, and there's a lot of individual variability here. Again, caffeine is a adenosine antagonist, or effectively works as a adenosine antagonist, and limits sleepiness. I highly recommend that everybody delay their caffeine intake for 90 to 120 minutes after waking. However painful it may be to eventually arrive at that 90 to 120 minutes after waking, you want... And I encourage you to clear out whatever residual adenosine is circulating in your system in that first 90 to 120 minutes of the day, get that sunlight exposure, get some movement to wake up, and then, and only then, start to ingest caffeine. Because what you'll do if you delay caffeine intake until 90 to 120 minutes after waking is you will avoid this so-called afternoon crash and you may still get a little bit of dip in energy in the afternoon, but it's not going to be that massive crash. So wait 90 to 120 minutes after waking in the morning to drink caffeine. And if you drink caffeine at any point throughout the day, really try and avoid any caffeine. Certainly avoid drinking more than 100 milligrams of caffeine after 4 p.m. And probably even better to limit your last caffeine intake to 3 p.m. or even 2 p.m. And for many people shifting that caffeine intake from Immediately after waking in the morning to 90 to 120 minutes gives them a much longer arc of energy throughout the day and they don't feel the need to drink more caffeine later in the afternoon. Caffeine intake late in the day, after 4 p.m. that is, can really disrupt the architecture of your sleep. So you might think you're sleeping well, but you're not sleeping nearly as well as you could if you avoided caffeine in those afternoon hours. The main levers and tools that are going to allow you to control when you are awake and when you are asleep and to get better sleep every single night are light, literally photons, light energy, could be from sunlight, could be from artificial light, as well as darkness. One way that you can ensure that that cortisol peak occurs early in the day, right about the time that you wake up, is to view bright light, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. Everybody, whether or not you live in a cloudy place or a sunny place, whether or not there's cloud cover or not that day, should really strive to get bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. The reason for that is very simple. You want to trigger that cortisol increase to occur very early in your day. And you don't want that cortisol peak to happen later, which is what will happen if you wait to get outside and see sunlight. The reason for this is that you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in your eye. Those neurons respond best to bright light and especially right after waking early in the day, they are best able to signal to a set of neurons out to your entire body that triggers that cortisol increase, provides a wake up signal for your brain and body and sets in motion a timer for you to fall asleep later that night. If there's cloud cover and I can't see the sun, I also know I'm doing a good thing because it turns out, especially on cloudy days, you want to get outside and get as much light energy or photons in your eyes. 
once you've woken up and you want to be awake, okay? So this is likely to be early in the day if you're following a more standard schedule. You will also want to leverage not just light, but temperature as a tool. Turns out that when your body is cooling down, you have a greater tendency to fall and stay asleep. In fact, every night when you actually sleep, your body is dropping by one to three degrees and that drop in temperature is required. It's like a gate that your body has to go through in order for you to get into sleep. And in fact, the converse is also true. If your body heats up by one to three degrees or so, you will wake up. Here's what I suggest you do. If you want to be alert early in the day and you want to sleep great at night, get that bright sunlight, get into some cold water. And if you don't want to get into some cold water, try and get some movement. It could be a walk so you can get your sunlight exposure while you're taking a walk first thing in the morning. It could be a light jog. It could be skipping rope. Or some of you are going to be working out mid-morning. Try and get your core body temperature increased first thing in the morning and a great way to do that is with the cold water and or with exercise. So now let's talk about what I'm calling critical period three of each 24 hour cycle. So this would be the period of time of late evening. So it might be 6 p.m. for some, depending on when you go to sleep or 7 p.m. Extending into the hours in which you decide to get into bed and go to sleep and then throughout the night. First of all, you're going to want to avoid bright artificial lights of any color you will find that if lights are very bright, doesn't matter if it's a blue light, a yellow light, or a red light, those bright lights will wake up your brain and body. They will activate the same mechanisms that were activated early in the day by sunlight. Early in the day, in the morning hours, you need a lot of bright light, ideally from sunlight, to be very alert and to wake up. But in the evening hours and nighttime hours, it takes very little light, very few photons, in order to wake up your brain and body and to disrupt your circadian clock and disrupt your sleep. So what that means is that once the sun goes down, you would be wise to try and dim the lights in your indoor environment most days, right? I realize some nights you're gonna throw a party and have people over, you might not wanna dim the lights. Some nights you're gonna go out, you might view a lot of bright lights. If you are going to use light at night, and most people do, I would encourage you to use as little artificial light as is required to carry out the activities you need to require safely. But most nights of your life, you're going to want to dim the lights in your internal environment. 